So here's the second part of exam two. It's our second set of figures. Um, the paper looked at here was looking at um, stomata and hair density in sandwort and honeysuckle plants. And this was testing the impact of air pollutants and technically environment on um, the growth of these plants. So figure 16.7 is describing some of the results of this. The goal was to determine if variation in hair growth and stomata density was caused by the environment the plants were growing in. This experiment took place in Pennsylvania and in order to begin pollution gradients were established based on the amount of pollution in the air caused by two different smelting plants. The study was on the Arernia patula, or the sandwort plant, and the Lonicera japonica, or the honeysuckle. These two plants were studied at different ranges. The near range, which was about 122 meters from the smelting plants. The medium range, which was 149 meters from the smelting plants. And the far range, which was 244 meters from the smelting plants. The um, plants were, were taken, samples were taken from the plants at different times um, throughout the years of 1977 and 1978, where they were studied and analyzed um, to calculate the stomata density and the um, number of the hair density or the count of hair on um, each of the leaves. You might notice that there is a lower leaf density and an upper leaf density um, for each that's described. This differs between the two plants because the sandwort has um, stomata on the upper side of their leaf, um, whereas the honeysuckle has stomata on the lower side of their leaf, and then the hairs differ um, in terms of that side as well. So that's why you see a difference. They found that um, lower stomata densities were found farther away from the, um, oh, excuse me, no, lower stomata densities were found in areas of higher air pollution, so those closer to the smelting plants. This is likely because the um, stomata take in air for the plant, and so having less of these present means that less polluted air is allowed to enter into the cell in order, or the plant in order to be processed. On the opposite side, there was uh, shown a significant increase in hair density on the leaves when there was higher pollution. This is because the hair blocks some of those air pollutants from coming in, and so it would make sense that there's an increased density in this hair as the pollution is closer to, um, as there's more um, concentrations of air pollution around um, the areas near the smelting plants. So the second figure um, is one of my favorites because I'm a big fan of maps, um, but this demonstrates the location of this um, of this experiment. It has the various smelting plants as well as the surrounding geographical features, which are actually really important um, for visualization of this um, of this experiment. So um, two, a few key things to note, um, the, the Blue Mountain and the Stony Ridge were both mapped using contour lines. This allows us to show the height of um, the two different, these two different landmarks. Um, another key feature is the Lay River and the um, Aquiscala Creek, um, both bodies of water which can carry um, different concentrations of pollutants, so it's important to note these. Besides this, we have the town of Palmerton as well as the West Smelter and the East Smelter. These were all mapped by um, various researchers or just um, people that like to make maps. <laughs> Another key feature is the, da the dashed lines show the zones of study um, with A1, A2, and A3, each correlating to the near, medium, and far um, zones we mentioned, I mentioned in the first um, slide. And these are mapped out using the, um, the different concentrations of air pollution that were found um, during the experiment. Some distinct findings in this um, map are, we have to mention the distinct areas of air pollution. Um, these are very clear based on the dotted lines and we can see that there are each very different distances from the smelters. 
Um, we also have to acknowledge the Blue Mountain impact. This was a this is a fairly decently sized mountain, and it's challenging for pollution um, or air pollutants to pass over the mountain or um, through that small gap. So it's highly more likely that the air pollution was spreading out to the north instead of to the south or um, over the Blue Mountain. And so that's why the main zones of study were um, on the north side of this mountain. And so, yeah, that's that's a lot. That's mainly what we can get from the map. Um, it all ties into the previous slide with the um, experiment they were doing. It's very much based on the concentration of zinc pollutants and other pollutants in the air that were being made by these smelters.